Hello and welcome to episode uh, 13, I think we are, so if we're superstitious, look away now. Um, recap of what we did last time in episode 12, we've proven our non-volatile storage is working uh, across reboots, so at runtime we can save some data to a partition um, on the ESP, well, on the SPI flash, but uh, anyway, same thing in uh, practical terms for what we're doing. Um, and then we can re retrieve that data after a reboot or after unplugging the ESP for as long as you want and then plugging it back in. Um, so it effectively acts like a memory stick plugged into your computer is a reasonable way of looking at it so you can unplug that take that somewhere else plug it back in uh, and that data is still there and we can do that at runtime um, so that's very handy for saving our ssid and password so we only need to set it up once um, using the app which of course will be at runtime not compile time so we can get rid of these we'll probably leave them in as a fallback um, but uh, barring that uh, we will send the data across at runtime so we need a way of saving that um, outside of the ram uh, so that we can recover that so we, we've done that and we did a little bit of um dirty test code here so the very first thing i'm going to do is get rid of this dirty test code because it's it's not required uh, and if i was being thorough i would actually go and delete those keys from the partition because they will actually be in there still so that wi-fi key and the uh what was it counter ctr key we used but but to be honest it's only a few bytes i don't really care and chances are at some point i'm going to change the petition table anyway uh, so that will get cleared um, or i do believe there is a command line thing you can do um, when you call idf.py I'm, I'm pretty sure it's either in that or there's another something.py that you can call that will uh, actually zero out uh, the partition that you specify or all of them or you can do a full arrays or something like that um, but I, I don't really care so I'm not going to bother um, so with that deleted <clears throat> um, with the MVS done uh, and the Wi-Fi working pretty well uh, and the SNTP that sits on top of that um, working well it is now time to do the smart config so if you're not familiar with smart config go and have a look at the esp website uh, for the idf uh, basically you download an app on your phone um, i'm on android so i can confirm it works on that i do believe it works on iphone as well but i've never i've not got an iphone so i can't test that but um, i'm fairly certain it does so you download this app, you plug in your ESP, the ESP runs some code provided by Espressif. The app connects to that code and sends it your SSID and password that you've keyed into the app uh, that you want to use. Then there's a, a little bit of to and fro in, in a communications protocol between the phone and the um, ESP and or your tablet or whatever you're running it on uh, and then the esp will have the ssid and password and then of course it's up to us to pass that to the wi-fi to connect to the the router i believe the communications goes through the router or something happens with the router in the loop um somewhere along the line so i had issues with my router um and smart config just didn't work and this was last year so it may well have been patched out but as far as i'm aware it hasn't um so i had to put my router in the 2.4 gigahertz band into legacy mode 
that was the setting on my uh, Asus router. Um, and then all of a sudden it started working absolutely fine. My Linksys router that I use for, for testing, hence this SSID here, uh, that I think I flashed it with it's either DDWRT or OpenWRT, I can't remember which one I put on it, just worked fine out of, out of the box. Um, uh, so you may not have an issue, but if you do come across an issue, it's just failing and sending some characters, but not all of them, then it may well be that you need to put your router's 2.4 gig band into legacy mode. Uh, there is a GitHub issue for it um, that I raised, uh, and the information's on there, uh, and a bit of to and fro between me and uh, Espressif, um, where they weren't having issues, but I was, and I could prove I was, but they couldn't reproduce it. Uh, and in the end, we, we found putting it in legacy mode works, and I don't believe either of us know why it works, but it does work. So, yeah, I'm not going to go diving into the bowels of smart config, Um to be frank, I'm not interested. So, um, you know, that if someone else wants to contribute to the community, then, then go for it, of course. Um, so, looking at my notes here, we've got a couple of headers we need to include, first of all. Um, and this is quite easy, so I'm just going to copy and paste those in. So, espsmartconfig.h and smartconfigact.h. So this code I wrote quite a while ago, so we'll see if it um, if it still works. There we go. <clears throat> so let, let's do this top down. Um, so let's think about how we're going to implement it first and, and the best way of integrating this into what we already have. Um, there, there's a saying that classes or objects should be open to extension but not modification um it's a philosophy but anyway we will be probably modifying our wi-fi class um or we we could create another derived class perhaps maybe that might actually be a better way of doing it um uh, no, no, I'm not convinced by that, actually. I think I'd prefer it to be in Wi-Fi, uh, and then it's all contained. It's, you know, it's up to you how you want to implement it at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Okay. So, right, we're going to need some more states. Now... I don't particularly want to change our global states too much. In fact, I don't think I want to change them at all. So I'm going to do something I'm probably going to regret, and we may come back and change this. Uh, but I'm going to create a new enum, which will live here. Uh, and we'll call this the smart config state. Um, <clears throat> and again, if I just quickly have a look at my implementation here, just to remind myself. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Wi Fi set config, we've done all of that. I'm just going to, excuse me, while I prepare what I should have done ages ago. Mark config start is what we want. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, fine. Um, so we've got not started. We sort of have to work around what the API gives us here. 
and started uh, and actually we need an intermediary here starting because this is from a callback so in the not started state we will call a function called start very similar to the the wi-fi side of things uh, that we must not call again until we've had the callback from the api to tell us that yes it has successfully started so once we've called start we'll jump into the starting state um, and then sit and wait there until we get the callback from the api to say yes i've started or no something went wrong and actually that's probably all we need yeah okay uh, and then we'll have a oops um static smart config state and then that's a static so we'll stick it up here with the rest of our statics um, yeah it shouldn't have given it quite such a long name but never mind uh, and we want not started for our initial state um, that's in braces so I shouldn't need to scope that to Wi-Fi that's a shame that looks so unbelievably ugly I'll tell you what I can just do that for you there we go uh, that does look ugly as hell. No, I think about that. Uh, I could just shorten that to SC, but I want it to be a little bit more verbose. Anyway, we'll take the hit. Um, okay. So we have a new event handler that we now need to implement. So where is our event handler? So we've got Event handler Wi-Fi IP. So we need another one. And this is going to get long, so I am going to abbreviate that to smart config. And just put a note on that. Um, and this takes void star arg an event base, an int32 event ID, and void star data. Oh, okay, so it's got the same prototype. That's good. Uh, just looking to see if we need to add anything else in. Possibly a smart config function. I don't think we necessarily need to do that. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, when what do we want to do here uh oh we need the configuration okay uh so we shall you know what let's tidy this up a little bit while we're here that's a bit a bit better 
So we want the static, uh, and we want. Oh, this has got a huge type. Never mind. Uh, that's going to look a bit weird, but anyway, smart config config. Um, <clears throat> yeah, okay. And I'm doing it this way because it follows the same as the Wi Fi init config there. Uh, so we want scope on that and then we want to do there is a macro for us here again like the wi-fi in it and that is smart config start config default yeah okay um and then ah uh, okay right i see what i've done here let's just try and tidy that up a bit Do we have a constructor for Wi-Fi? Yes, we do. There is a ver there, there's a variable within here that I want to change. And actually, this might not work anyway. Okay, right, before I do that, let's actually get this initialized. Um, so, we want to call ESP Smart Config Start when So, I'm not quite with it today. Uh, We want to call this once Wi-Fi is up. So do we have a task for Wi-Fi? I don't think we do, do we? This is a taskless class. Uh, don't care about that, don't care about that, don't care about that. It is, it's taskless. It would be nice to keep it taskless. That just means we have to do a bit more work in the callbacks, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, if you do too much work, particularly in a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth callback, um, it means that the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth task can't do anything else whilst it's doing that. Treat it like an interrupt. Um, so if data comes in, but it can't process that data because you're busy executing your own code in the callback, um, you can very quickly overflow buffers and have system crashes and all sorts of things going on. So you want to try and keep these as clean as possible. Uh, and to that end, actually, mutexes could be problematic if you sat there waiting for it. Um, we'll roll with it for now, but we might come back and change this. So I'm going to put a note. Waiting for mu text in callback um, and I won't copy and paste it down because it will be obvious when we come back to this okay the state is now ready to connect Hmm. Actually, it would make sense to decouple this slightly.
just trying to think what the best way of doing this is. And it's worth very much worth spending time thinking about the issue. So we jump into the ready to connect state. How do them how do we actually then connect? Oh, I know why. It's because our SSID and password are in the Wi Fi config. Hmm, so, where do we call? ESP Wi-Fi connect. That's what's throwing me. Oops. Oh, in begin. Right, yeah, got it. Got it, got it, got it. Yes, okay. So I've written this slightly differently to my notes. That's that's why it threw me. Um, so what we need is in this stage, we need to know whether or not we've got credentials, whether or not we've got an SSID and password. Okay, right, that's that's good. That's what we need. yeah yeah i'm happy with that um and we need to check our config so we may want to comment this out in fact we may want all of this No, because we need to set the config to start it. So we just want this bit. Yeah, 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 no, happy with that. So if we are ready to connect, um, we need to do some stuff. Let's just paste that in for the moment. In fact, let's stick this somewhere else. Let's just create some room up here. Um, now oh, and watch the watch IntelliSense go absolutely mental. Uh, oh no, it's not surprisingly. So what we need to do is check our credentials. Let's just collapse some of this stuff we don't need for the moment. So our Wi-Fi config Let's create a little helper function. That's what I want to do. But where do I want to put it? Here, here looks good. So we'll have a static bool, oh, static bool. Um, Empty credentials. Uh, takes no parameters. 
and we are going to return you'll see where I'm going with this in a sec have we got string C string yes we do um, so if zero equals string len and then our SSID so we're just verifying whether or not there's data in there doesn't necessarily mean it's good or that the router is turned on or you know there's not a typo in it but we're just verifying that there's actually data in there that we could potentially give a get give a try so if the ssid or the password have a zero length string in them now potential bug here if you don't have a password but come on now really um if that happens i'm happy to not support it quite frankly uh then we will return true uh, else will return false okay so nice little helper function there so that means we can say uh, copy that we can do if not empty credentials then do this process that we had before yeah so we've got some data which might be good in the um in the config so let's try and use them Um, else we need to start up smart config uh, and the way we do that is uh, da, 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 we need to register the event handler and actually we can do that in our init uh, event handler so I'm just going to copy and paste one of the other uh, initializers for the or registers for the um, event handler And this is going to be an SC event and our event handler is SC event handler Again, this is slightly different to my notes because this the event handler registers register call has changed as you can see there and we'll do any id uh, rather than what i had in my notes there calling esp event handler instance register yeah okay so the event handler is registered now so we don't have to worry about that obviously we've not written it yet um, so uh, right yeah the variable in here that I wanted to change let's have a look uh, if we have 12 into that is enable log I would very much like to enable that uh, because default is not enabled I believe enable log false as you can see up here
you know what, that's not a particularly long struct. So we can just do true, false, null. So we can get rid of that. True, false, uh, null. Hang on, what is the third thing? Is it a pointer? Oop, wrong button. Yeah, it's a pointer. So let's do it the C++ way and use null pointer. Okay, so that that'll just enable the logging. Um, turn that off if you wish. Uh, so if we don't have credentials, then clearly we can't call connect. Uh, so what we want to do instead um, is call smart config start. Sounds reasonable. So ESP smart config start, we need to pass it a pointer to our config. And this is where it may all come crashing down if that, oh no, it is const, that's good. A lot of the IDF stuff don't have const there. So if you've declared this as a const somewhere, you, well, you can const cast it. Uh, or C style cast it, uh, but really that's just a bad idea. Um, unless you know what the function's doing under the under the hood. So, and then let's put our logging in here. So let's just copy and paste those down. Could probably do with a log func macro or, or, or a function or something so calling esp smart config start and then print out the status and then if esp ok is equal to status then we will change our smart config state. Where is it? Smart config state to starting. So smart config state is equal to, and it's a scoped enum. So there we go. Or strongly typed enum. Uh, to starting now we need to do a check here because we don't want to call this over and over again uh, we want to make sure we're not already in the starting state so if someone's just spamming begin and we're already in the starting or started state then we don't want to start again uh, so quite simply I'm going to do else if Let's just copy and paste that in for now. Um, wait for this code to catch up. I don't know why it does this when I'm recording. And then we want not started. Sorry, a lot of tab flipping here. My apologies. So what we're saying here is if we've not got empty credentials, we'll try and connect we need to implement some fault finding on this if the credentials are wrong uh, but we'll do that later um, but if we do have empty credentials and we're in the not started state for smart config then start smart config otherwise there's not a lot to do we've got no credentials so we can't connect we've already started smart config so what more can we do not not a great deal uh, so we're just going to break out um, and so that effect actually we probably should raise an error, uh, an error message else status equals ESP not ESP fail but I'm just typing that in so I can F12 
I want like an already running or something like that. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay, well that that's at least going to start our smart config, um, which is good. So now we need to implement our smart config callback, and I am just scrolling to find that. Uh, okay. Hmm. Let's have a look at what the callback can actually send us. I might have to pull up the git uh, not the github the documentation smart config so let's have a quick look at this then uh, and make sure we're on version release 4.3 always make sure you do that <laughs> yeah i've had issues before because stuff was fixed i was on an old version or you know vice versa um so oh, this has been extended there's more stuff here Here we go, here's the event types, that's what I was looking for. Oh, let me just zoom in on that for you. So we've got scan done, find channel, got SSID, send ACK. So none of those are actually smart config started. So it looks like everything I said about we don't know whether it's starting or started it was a lie. <laughs> uh, oh dear. Interesting. So this is why when when I talk about um, keeping things the same and consistent. And that's what we're trying to do with our code. Um, if things are consistent and the same, it makes life a lot easier. You don't have to keep looking things up, um, which you know just speeds up, speeds everything up really. Uh, so we don't need a starting state. Um, so what we shall do. Is we need to jump straight to started started like that and that's oops wrong button uh, save all and then yeah IntelliSense catches up okay so we're now in the started state right and I've immediately forgotten what the callbacks were Let's have a look. Got SSID password. Oh, so that's right. Okay. Yep. 
yeah, fine. Let us implement our callback then, shall we? Let's get on and do it. So I don't need that anymore. Let's just nudge that down and give us some scope. And Wi-Fi. Super, right. So what do we want to do in our smart config callback? Um, or event handler, should I say? Well, as I said, with keeping things consistent, let's follow the same methodology. Uh, and let's sort of copy this one. So let's just copy those first couple of lines for um, to get us going. So if SC events is equal to event base to make sure that actually this callback was called for a, a smart config thing before we then start um, messing about casting uh, and we want the SSID got password uh, purely so I can F12 and see what the type of that is. Smart config event T. So we want to, I want a smart config event type static cast to that. So now we have the event. Excellent. And then we normally print that out. Okay, looks fine. And then we go straight into our switch case. Nice. So case. And the only one actually we care about is this got SSID and password one. And you could filter it when we um, register the callback. Um, but we'll do it the more wholesome way here. Again, to keep it consistent with everything else. Uh, and then default. And we're just going to break out of that purely because we don't care about the other states um typically having a default that just breaks like that is is really bad um you should handle everything the way you intend um in this case actually that is the way i intend but doing that as your norm uh sticking a default break is typically going to lead you into issues so just something to think about uh and so that um, in that thought process we'll put a note here uh, don't care uh, don't have any work to do for the other event types like that there we go so now it's clear when someone else comes to read this they can say Oh, why is he just broken out of this? You know, you know, you're not handling things. Oh, there's a note. There's not actually anything to do for the other event types. So there we are. Um, and this is going to need some sort of scope on it because of what we're going to do next. So now we need to get the data from the callback um, and in true form with the rest of the smart config stuff this has a hilariously verbose type name which I'm not against it's just it just looks ugly but you can read it and it makes sense it's better than just having you know sc underscore t and you're you know unless you're working on smart config at the time you'd be like what on earth is that I have no idea um, and you would then have to you know F12 into it and so on 
So if we do F12 into it, we can see that this is a struct that contains our SSID and password, has null terminated strings, that's nice. Some tokens, the IP address of your phone, uh, MAC address of the target access point. Okay, that's, yeah, let's get some good, good stuff in here. Uh, and this is a pointer. So, uh, we want data is equal to a static cast. I think we can static cast from a void start. And don't need to do a reinterpret cast. We'll soon find out. Uh, and this is where it gets really stupid. Oh, well, just looks like it's almost going to fit on the screen close enough. So we'll just static cast the event data from a void star um, into whatever this is. Uh, smart comp, that struct anyway. So now we have a pointer to that, that data. Uh, and let's just quickly build that to make sure I can static cast and I don't have to do a reinterpret. Can't remember if you can static cast from, from Voidstar to any other type because it could be dangerous, obviously. Uh, and actually we can brace initialize that which just shortens it slightly uh, okay initialize an argument one of something something oh okay SSID and password are byte arrays, not char arrays. That's not what I wanted. Let's just quickly check that. Um, okay, it doesn't specify if it's null terminated or not. Which is a bit of an issue. In fact, we can do this easy mode. It's a bit, it's a bit more dirty. Uh, so we can change this um, to if the first byte in the array is null, the null terminator. then the, the array is empty. And because we default initialize this, that is actually safe to do. If we didn't default initialize this, so what I mean by that is didn't have these braces there, uh, then it would just allocate the memory but not clear it. And it could have any sort of data unspecified in it, uh, it just whatever the memory was last time. Um, that's the risk. So if we specify we want to default initialize it, I think actually in C++ now it, it does that by default. Um, but it's, you know, it's good pros. Um, it's a good thing to do to be clear and it makes it very obvious what you're trying to do. So we'll check the first byte of the array. If it's null, 
then clearly there's no string in there. And we just need to remember when we clear that string to set the first byte to null, which is actually what you would do anyway. Um, so that should be reasonably safe to do. Unused variable data. So it didn't actually give us a warning about this, an error about the static cast. Oh, maybe it did. I can see a red squiggle there. Because uh, that needs to be a star. Okay. Wi-Fi config was not declared in this scope. Oh, because I've still got this. Uh, let's just put a block comment around that for the moment. I want to add some consts onto this as well. Constness. Doop doop doo. Yeah, that looks good. So you can static cast that. That's that's nice to know. Uh, so I want to add some const onto this. So it's const data because we're we're promising not to change it, uh, and it's a const pointer that at least adds some protection um, around this because I don't know if smart config then goes and uses that array under the hood. So this just prevents us from accidentally changing anything. It just makes um, passing around pointers a little bit less error prone uh, or bug prone, should I say. So what we want to do um, is if our state is what ready to connect yeah if our state is ready to connect because we don't want to start overwriting this if we're already connected, not that that should actually happen, but nevertheless. So if our state is ready to connect, where is it? If our state is ready to connect, then we shall copy in our SSID and password. Now, if we just F12 into that, that's a 32 byte array, that's a 64 byte array, and I'm just going to pin that. And our config type is a 32 and a 64. Okay, that's good both as unsigned char arrays but null terminated strings why aren't these chars anyway whatever um
Yeah, that's weird. Uh, anyway, so what we need to do is a string copy. We could do... Um, a mem copy. But since they, it's promising that they are a null terminated string, I'm more happy doing that. So string and copy. And we are copying to this thing I commented out. Where is it? That that's a uint 8 and it needs to be a char. Oh, so I see why I did it as a mem copy. You know what? Let's do it as a mem copy. So then it can be any type. Uh, because we know it's null terminated anyway, we might as well just copy across the whole array. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're copying to there, and we're copying from event. Sorry, not event data. From data dot. Oh, SSID. That's nice and easy. And then. size of uh, standard min is that in utility standard min is in oh it's in algorithm do we have algorithm yes we do so standard min uh, of size of blah and size of blah so that so let me explain why i'm doing that at the moment these two arrays are both 32 bytes long okay 32 there and we got 32 there so that's fine so we could just plug in one of the numbers um the issue with that is if this api changes in the future and suddenly they decide oh actually i want to make that 31 then what we would end up doing is copying 32 bytes into a 31 byte array or you know vice versa if it's the other way around so you need to make sure you know which is the smallest and take the smallest so you don't over copy um because likely what would happen where well, we're copying into this uh, this one so it's likely to overwrite the first bit of password not an issue because we're then going to set the password um, but then that's going to overwrite the scan method likely or some padding or something um, it's just bad uh, standard min is const expert uh, I believe let me just double check that yes it is so that will be so this whole expression you may think, oh, but each time you're doing this, you've got to do this computation, figure out which one's smaller than the other. No, because these types are known at compile time, standard min will just work it out at compile time, put in the number, which in this case is 32. Uh, but if it changes in the future, whatever, uh, that's fine. So we've now copied in our SID. Let's do the same for our password. Uh, and this is a pointer. So we need to use the arrow operator to access that not the dot operator is it an operator the dot i suppose it probably is isn't it and it would probably make more sense to actually replace these with what the actual type is so let's just change that to 
that colon colon SSI date. I prefer doing it that way. Oh, but this is going to look horrible now, isn't it? Never mind. That's personal preference. I mean, the compiler will work it out anyway, but I prefer that despite the fact that that looks horrible. Hmm. Oh well. And then we want Wi Fi colon colon password. There we go. So that'll copy in the SSID and password. So now, oh, hello. Um, so now we want to send that config again to the Wi Fi, uh, which we have already done somewhere. In our init set mode set config so let us copy and paste that up Come on, be a bit more clever about copying and pasting, please, VS Code. So do keep track of mode. Yeah, fine, we're, we're not doing that just now. So we now have an SSID and password, and actually these should be correct, um, but we don't know until we know. And then what do we want to do? We want to call connect, don't we? Uh, but actually before we do that, we do actually have some work to do. in this callback uh, as dictated by the protocol. So let me just copy and paste this in first and then we'll talk about it. Let's just get this into our styling. Uh, Comps DSP error type equals and then it is data um, so yeah uh, we have to call this function to send the acknowledgement to the phone that we got the SSID and password um, why that's not lower in the protocol pass I'm not sure maybe it's to allow you to do some memory checking on it or something um, And then, yeah, and that's the data you have to pass it, which is contained within this type. Uh, so type token and cell phone IP. Um, type token cell phone ID. So they're all in there. Uh, and this is what the example shows how you're supposed to do it. And let's change that to ESP error to name. There we go. So we send the ACK. Then we copy our SSID and password in. Then we set the config in the Wi-Fi. And then we call connect. We don't really 
care too much whether the act is successful. So. We have status there. So let's create that variable. Status. Uh, and then we need to do our usual thing here. So if the status is OK, then we'll call connect. And then if that is OK, we move into the connecting state. Yeah, there's probably a bunch of bugs in here and edge cases and so on, but this will do for the time being. And this episode is getting a bit long. Um, but that now is actually all the work we need to do. Uh, bar we need to get some mutexes at the start of this so what's that the connect guard mutex which we need to obtain here before we call connect. We need the <clears throat> state change mutex here. Hang on, let's just copy and paste this from somewhere else. There we go. So there's the state change mutex. Uh, so we can change our state. Uh, and yeah, cool. We'll finish this off on the next episode then. Uh, so I'll see you then.